I know, this title sounds very dramatic, but it says exactly what you are going to get out of this video. And I see this full of confidence because everything I'm going to mention today is exactly everything I changed myself on the way I approach photography to be able to make it as a full-time freelance photographer in London. I was super overwhelmed and I was super stuck at the beginning when I arrived to the big city till I realized the very hard way how much I needed to change my approach to photography to finally quit my job and make a living with my camera. In the intro literally how I shot my YouTube thumbnail in my home photography studio and I wanted to do this to prove one of the many points I'm going to be talking about today because for beginner photographers the main struggle is the feeling of overwhelm being overwhelmed with everything with the gear we think we need with the expensive studio we think we need with the knowledge we think we need with the level of photography we think we need to be able to make money with photography and how overwhelmed we feel because we don't know where to start from. I'm sure this resonates with you because I've been there myself and just when I switched my mindset about all these little things I just told you is when I was able to make money with photography and grow. So I want you to pay attention to this video because this is gonna help you a lot. But first, if you like photography and content creation and creativity overall, Make sure to subscribe to my channel if you didn't yet, like the video and click the bell to be notified about my weekly videos because otherwise you're gonna miss out. So I'm gonna go part by part because I don't want you to miss anything and I want it to be very digestible for you because it's super important that you switch the mindset for every single little thing I'm gonna talk about today because it's gonna help you a lot to be able to make money with your camera and get confidence. Let's talk about gear first. I'm not gonna tell you gear doesn't matter because I don't know you notice everyone who is telling you that gear doesn't matter have the best camera, the best lenses and expensive gear. So gear does matter a lot because I did improve my photography a lot when I improved my cameras. But one thing I'm very agree with those people who say sometimes gear doesn't matter is that you have to start with whatever you have. And you cannot put limitations with that. You cannot sabotage yourself thinking my camera is not good enough. I cannot make money because the quality is not good enough. You have to have a very, 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 very bad camera to don't be able to make money. Guys, it took me so many years to be able to get the Canon 5D Mark IV. So don't feel bad because you are seeing other photographers. Oh my God, look what camera they have. The quality is way better. I'm not gonna be able to be better than that person. No, if you're gonna go that way, that's bad. You have to work with the camera you have and you're gonna be able to make money and you're gonna be able to offer good quality. Maybe not as good as others, but it's gonna be good enough. Same goes for lenses, for example. If you cannot afford many lenses, prime lenses, which I love and they are very expensive, don't buy prime lenses. Get one versatile lens. This is the best advice I can give you because I started like that, my Canon 7D and one 15 85 millimeters from Canon, a very, very, very average lens. And with that lens, I did portrait projects, I did landscape photography, travel photography, product photography, because the range, the focal range is super versatile. And with that, I was working for many years, making money with photography. So don't think you need many lenses, many cameras, to be able to make money as a photographer because you don't. I was working with that gear for many years and you can do as well. You can always make it work. For example, in my situation as well, I do a studio photography, but I'm gonna mention that way later in the video. I wanted two lights in my studio. I got so frustrated till the point I was even crying many times because it's like, how the hell I'm gonna improve my studio photography if I have just one light? Guess what? After 14 years, I'm still shooting with one light, even if I have more, because I love it. You get to learn a lot through limitations. So what I did is have one light and then learn 
properly, how I could play with it to be able to be creative with music press shots, which is what I do a lot. So I had to play with the position of the lighting to be able to give to my client different moves in the photography. Then I was like, okay, I'm gonna buy color gels because they are very cheap and I'm gonna be able with one light and color gels to deliver to my client other kind of creative shots using one light. So I learned a lot through limitations and now playing with one light is what I love the most and is how I learn a studio photography with one light. So don't be scared to have the minimum gear because that's gonna teach you a lot in the long term and then whenever you are ready to improve and to get more gear, you're gonna be mastering those lights. So this goes for everything and all kind of gear. Knowledge. I may do a separate video about this because there are so many things to talk about here, but mostly I will tell you that you don't need to study in the university any photography career. Many people can be against me, but I'm very sorry, everything you can learn in the university, you can learn it by yourself. Yes, you're gonna get a title or a certification, however you wanna call it, but I can promise you clients don't ask for that and companies don't ask for that, at least in London. What they want is a good portfolio and experience. If you show them a very professional portfolio and good experience, they know already what you can deliver and they don't care if you have a title or you have a career in the university and you're gonna be able to save tons of money. How can you learn? You can learn through YouTube, you can learn through a Skillshare, you can learn through Creative Life. They have amazing courses over there and they are quite affordable. Or you can buy courses from your favorite creators or photographers. And I love this option because you actually support independent artists. I do that with filmmaking. I'm buying courses in filmmaking because I love it. I want to learn more. And I buy it from other creators I love because I want to support their work. And most likely, if they are good at what they do, the course is going to be amazing. So those are the options. But I can promise you guys, I did study graphic design, I did so many courses in photo editing, in photography, and I did study in Central St. Martins in London, creative direction for fashion. And this was very good for my CV because Central St. Martins is one of the most famous universities in the world for arts and for creatives. And it's amazing. I have the experience, I have the knowledge, I have a beautiful CV. But I can tell you that now, for what I'm doing, I don't really need it. Of course, it gave me knowledge, of course, but what I mean is clients never gonna ask you that. So just feed your knowledge with everything you can. You don't really need to study in the university. Spend more time on YouTube, Skillshare, Creative Life, or buying courses of photographers you like. Photography Studio. I struggled with this one the most because I wanted to shoot with music artists and I didn't have a photography studio and at the beginning I didn't know how to do it I was like okay I live in London I pay loads of money to share a room with other people in London and then I managed to live alone in a very small place okay and it was very expensive I was so discouraged because I was thinking how the hell I'm gonna pay an external studio if I'm paying a lot on rent for my flat I'm not gonna be able to afford it so then I created actually on YouTube amazing videos about this because it became my solution to be able to shoot professionally at home studio photography. So I'm gonna put all the links below. I'm not gonna talk about that today, but I'm gonna put the links below to build your own photography studio, even in a small place, even in your room. And it's super easy, super, super, super affordable. I'm sure you can have it. And this is the way I did it. Now you see my home photography studio here, but before it was even smaller. I started in a room, then in a very tiny studio, and this studio is a bit bigger, but it's still quite tiny. I'm gonna do actually a tour soon on my channel because so many of you are asking me. But what I mean with this is you have more possibilities than the ones you are thinking. So even if you don't want to do an affordable home photography studio for whatever reason, then shoot outdoors in location. If you're a portrait photographer, there are amazing locations out there. You can shoot in nature if you don't live in a city because, okay, I shoot in London and London has incredible places, the architecture is amazing, but you can shoot in nature and in nature you can take beautiful portrait photography. Wedding photographers. Maybe you want to do pre-weddings or post-weddings and you need a studio and you don't have a studio. 
So guys, don't limit yourself because maybe you are thinking, I'm not going to target that client because they're going to want the studio pictures and I don't have a studio. You know how many people, they don't want the studio photography. So don't put limitations on yourself and target clients and just tell them, I don't have a studio, but I shoot outdoors in beautiful locations on the city, or I have a car, we can go to the mountains, to the beach, to whatever it is, and you're going to be able to take incredible wedding photography because actually the best shots I've seen of wedding photographers is in nature. So maybe you are thinking you need a studio to be able to target those clients and you don't need it. So stop guessing what the client wants. Because in my situation, I was very scared of bringing DJs and music producers and singers and actors to my tiny flat to shoot. And then I realized after the first one, the second one, the third one, that they didn't care. They actually loved it because it's more intimate as well. You offer them a coffee, you get to chat like a friend and actually it's portrait photography. So they feel more comfortable with you because it's a closer way to shoot rather than in a fancy studio. So don't put limitations on yourself thinking things the clients maybe don't even think. So you can shoot at home, you can shoot outdoors. There are so many ways to do it. Product photographers as well. The last example I'm going to put because you can apply this to every single niche. If you don't have a studio or you don't want to build your own at home, you can do lifestyle product photography and you can take amazing lifestyle shots which look very, very cool and still get money even if they are not studio shots. You can go around this all the time and get paid anyway and then with time you will be able to upgrade. Or you can always rent an external studio by day, by half a day or by hour. But to be fair, for one day renting an external studio, you can have your own at home. And I love this because I can get creative every single day, shoot my YouTube thumbnails, do my self-portrait photography and experiment and learn new things. Again, I'm going to put below the video for you to be able to build your own home photography studio. <laughs> Level of photography. This is another thing I was struggling with because I was pointing too high and nobody was getting back to me. And then with time I realized what the hell am I doing, how I'm targeting these companies and these brands if my level of photography is not good enough. Okay, you may suck at the beginning, okay? You may have to learn and practice, but I promise you, even if you have basic knowledge of photography and you have an average level of photography, you can get paid. The only thing you have to do is target lower brands, like newer brands. There are so many new brands out there, so many new, um, no influencers, let's say freelancers who need photography. Just go through Instagram or through their websites and check which kind of brands or people they need your help. So check the level of photography you can equal or make better and contact those. But there is a space for everyone out there. You're going to be able to charge less, obviously, if your quality is lower, but you're going to be able to charge. So stop thinking you are not good enough and stop thinking, oh my God, how the hell I'm going to contact this client if my level of photography is crap? No, the only thing you have to do is contact a smaller brand who don't have incredible pictures and you're going to be able to help them out and grow and practice. But the level of photography you have probably is more than enough to start getting a little bit of money. Where to start from? You have to start with a portfolio. And so many of you are asking me, Laura, how I'm going to build a portfolio if I'm not working with clients? This happened to me as well. I was wondering the same thing when I started. Who is telling you that you need to work with real client work? Nobody is going to know in your website. So what you have to do, I'm going to put some examples, is build your portfolio with collaborations. For example, if you're a portrait photographer, get collaborations with models, which you're going to be able to find for sure with friends, family or new models and you're going to be able to build a portfolio with important photography. Same with fashion. You can do the same contacting new brands or small brands and offer them pictures for free. They're going to be happy with that. And then you're going to be able to build your portfolio to practice and put the pictures on your website. Same with product photography. You don't need to work with any brand. I'm sure you have beautiful things at home, like a camera, a watch, a bottle of something. I don't know, a water bottle, <laughs> food photography. You can create whatever you like and use it as a portfolio. So you don't need real client work for this. Second thing, don't waste years. I'm guilty of that. Trying to figure out your niche before contacting anyone. 
because guys, you don't need to have just one niche. You need to have a main one you love and you are very good at. In my case, it's creative portrait photography. But then I love to shoot within many others. So what I did on my website is put portrait photography as my main niche, but I have very well categorized other niches because I like to shoot within travel photography, wildlife photography, sports photography, product photography. And nowadays, guys, you can make more money if you are versatile. If you are paralyzed because you are trying to find out which one is your niche, stop. Start building that portfolio within the main niche you are shooting or all the niches you are shooting. I don't recommend to put more than three or four because it is too many otherwise, but then separated by menus, you can take my website as a reference because it's going to help you a lot and just have it organized. Once you have that, you're going to be able to contact clients. I always put a free trial to my website below because I love that platform. It's a Squarespace. I think you know that already. I'm not a sponsor, by the way. But I love Squarespace because you can create your portfolio. You can create a photography blog. You can create also a shop for digital products or to sell prints to your clients as well. So just grab the free trial and experiment with it because you're gonna be able to see how easy it is to grab a template, swap the pictures, swap the text, and be able to make a professional website. Instagram is not a portfolio, so please have a website with your professional email, with your branding, and be professional because otherwise you're gonna be always stuck in the beginner phase, and you don't want that. Main outcome of this video, you really need to remember. If you don't have budget for more lenses, get one versatile. If you don't have money for more lights, play with one. If you don't have a studio, build your own affordable home photography studio or shoot in location. You don't have level enough, point to smaller brands and individuals. You don't have knowledge enough, YouTube is for free. A Skillshare, I'm gonna put a free trial below where you can see all the courses you like during the free trial. And then it's just, I think like $10 per month. I pay for a couple of years and no regrets. Then you have Creative Life. It's an amazing platform where you have so many photography courses within many niches from very big photographers. I'm gonna put the link below as well for you to check with discounts. And then the option of buying courses from other photographers. And if you don't have a portfolio, that's fine. You don't need to work with clients. Just do collaborations. If, for example, you want to be an interior photographer and target hotels in the future, shoot in a hotel of your town for free to build a portfolio. Guys, there are always ways around everything. And I wish someone told me this at the beginning because I was stuck thinking I needed the best gear, I needed a photography studio, I needed to improve my level way more till I start pitching clients. Like, I was my worst enemy putting limitations to myself. So please pay attention to this video, watch it again if you need, and get confidence. And if you are very, very, very bad, that's fine, practice, get collaborations and get better. But with a basic knowledge of photography, I promise you, you can start making money and you just need one camera and one lens. That's all you need and it doesn't have to be crazy expensive. Basic camera, basic lens, because nowadays, even the basic camera and the basic lens are good enough to make money. Watch these videos here as well, because they're gonna help you a lot to make a stable income in a monthly basis and also to start getting clients non-stop, even if you are a beginner. And please remember to subscribe if you didn't yet and like the video if you do something good from it. And I will see you in the next one. Big love.